Okay, this is the Math 1113 Zoom meeting for 8 a.m. on October 6, week of 10.5 to 10.9. We're going to do section 6.1 and 6.2 this week. Practice problems, section 6.1, page 509, 3 to 53. Oh, a lot of little sections in that, I believe. In section 6.2, page 518, uh, and I picked out these three sections. Again, not directly for a grade. Quiz six on Friday will be based on them and do Sunday uh, 10, 11. The web assignment problems from these two sections. Once again, personal study plan, you practice quiz for section six, one, one, two, and five only. One, two, six, and seven out of six, two only. I believe that's seven problems. So yeah, email me the percent of these seven problems you get correct. Try to keep to the same schedule, keep things uh, less confusing. Um, there's nothing really new in 6.1. I've been talking about the unit circle since the beginning of the class, just so there would be nothing new when we hit this chapter. And so there really isn't um, anything new to be talked about. Um, The uh, again, unit circle is all it's talking about, page 504. Unit circle, radius one, and you see that x squared plus y squared equals one. Uh, equation, we've been doing that since the beginning of the class. So I'm just gonna go through some example problems. Kind of explain just a little bit of the lingo book openly says you could do chapter six or chapter five first. I find it confusing to do chapter six and swing back to chapter five. So I just go ahead and do it in chapter order. Page 509. Okay, and the homework starts with number three. Once again, your unit circle. Circle of radius one. In any arbitrary point, you drop a triangle, X leg, Y leg, one. We're gonna be doing our same right triangle trig, but inside the unit circle. And your governing equation, again, is X squared plus Y squared equals one. Now, one little technical point, they're gonna, they're gonna call the angle T in this section. The angle, used is T, and that is because they're, they're gonna use T as the letter input to a function. Uh, so sine T, cosine T, tangent t, et cetera, will be regarded as functions. All right, if we swing back to number three, you're given three-fifths and a negative four-fifths. They want you to show this point is on the unit circle. This is your x-coordinate, this is your y-coordinate. So basically you have to show that it satisfies Y squared equals one. So plugging in three fifths squared, add your Y squared, which is negative four fifths squared. Does that come up one? If it does, it's on the unit circle. So you get nine over 25. Here you get four squared, negative four squared, 16 over 25 equals one. 
Again, you get a common denominator, so that stays over 25. 16 plus 9, sure enough, is 25. And 25 over 25 is, of course, 1. So yes, this point is on the unit circle. Okay, by number nine, they are having you find the missing coordinate. The missing coordinate for the point, and I've frozen on the screen. to be on the unit circle. And a frozen Internet has been breaking down on a Zoom meeting. If he's on his, it's still working. I'm going to uh, pause the recording and reset this. Well, no, I'm going to try to come back. Okay. Let's see if I'll keep going. Okay, so now in the point, they're going to use P for point, and they're giving negative three fifths and then blank. All right, we don't really solve for blank in algebra. I like to use the letter. Don't really solve for blank. It's right here. Number nine. I'll just give a big blank. It says find the missing coordinate. I wish they'd fill it in with a Y. And if you're like in 10 or 11, you're missing the X, fill it in with the X. You don't solve for blank in algebra. You solve for a letter. So again, you start with X squared plus Y squared equals one. You want to find Y. Negative three fifths. Add Y squared equals one. 9 over 25 equals 1. y squared equals 1 minus 9 over 25. Uh, you can play it with a common denominator, 25 over 25 minus 9 over 25. So y squared, it's almost a repeat of number 3. I think, I think the signs are going to be slightly different. 16 over 25 square root. And we get y equals four fifths. Yeah, you got the same numbers as number three, but uh, different signs. Okay, now, oops, I missed a detail. It said quadrant three. Yeah, I got to pay attention to that. That's going to be your signs. So if you notice, it did say that. Quadrant three. Well, this is where you see at this step, you're in quadrant three. It was given y is negative quadrant three. So you really want negative four fifths. Remember at this step, you should get y is plus or minus four fifths. So when they say quadrant three, y is negative. So yeah, the X sign is different, which makes the Y, y the same as problem three, but the X is different. different sign. Okay. You generalize this by problem 15. Generalize this.
I give it to you in words. All right, basically in words, X coordinate is five thirteenths to just write it down. Oops, didn't have to put in parentheses. And Y is negative. Find X, Y. It's on the unit circle. words. It's all different ways of working the same problem. They were just worded differently, but it's really all the same problem. Point is on the unit circle, so it satisfies x squared plus y squared equals 1. Find this point from a given info. They give you the x coordinate, just like on some of these they did up here, like 12 and 9. And then uh, they're telling you y is negative. So they give you the quadrant. They're saying y is negative. So just once again, x squared plus y squared equals 1. 5 thirteenths squared plus y squared equals 1. Plugging in the x. 25 over 169 plus y squared equals 1. 1 minus 25 over 169. You can again get a common denominator. One is always number this number over number. One over one sixty nine minus twenty five. That'll come up one forty four over one sixty nine. Y then is plus or minus square root one forty four over one sixty nine. But again, it said y is negative. So we want negative twelve over thirteen. Square root of 144 is 12. Square root of 169 is 13. Okay. Um, 21 talks about terminal points. For an angle. One terminal points. Or an angle. Right. And so I'm calling it an angle. It really is, but they're using letter T I'm trying to make a distinction that this is an input to a function. All right, if you go up here, they're telling you t is pi over 4, and that is this angle. And I hope you remember, we showed it to you, pi over 4 is 45 degrees and root 2 over 2. Okay. So what you're doing, this is the terminal point. or this angle. Now, they want you to do it for each red dot. So they, they start in here. I, can't, I'm not, I don't have a red pen, but if you look, they want you to do for each around the circle at each red dot, for each point in the figure. So they're talking about these red dots, each point. So if you want to back up and do one here, terminal point for that would be one and zero. I don't really give any lettering for it. So this is one and zero. And they're telling you it increases by pi over four. So up here at one, they're saying one, but the terminal point there is zero, one. Okay. Find T and the terminal point. Okay. Uh, this is zero. Uh, T, T equals zero. T equals pi over four. I was given. This is T equals pi over two. Here's the terminal point. Three pi over four. Terminal point, you'd be at negative root two because the X is negative. Y is positive. They put a red dot here. You're at pi. You're at negative one for the X and zero for the Y. 
And then you do the other two quadrants. Five, pi over four. Hope you all have all these memorized and you're both negative. Both negative. Three pi over two, you're at zero negative one. See, this is your T, uh, sorry. This is your T and this is your terminal point. And finally, at the pi over two, four, pi over four increment here, you are at um, seven pi over four, that's your T. And your terminal point, uh, your X is positive, Y is negative. So that's kind of that's kind of what the meant. 22, it's an even one to have you do it for the 30 and 60 degree equivalents. Seven, you repeat the unit circle, but at 45 degrees around in 21. Okay, then by 23, you are given, find your terminal, these are basically angles. And they want you to find your point X, Y on the unit circle at these angles. Okay. Down here, they want reference number. Okay, now this section chapter, they call it reference number. Last chapter, they called it reference angle. It's the same concept. It's the space back to the x axis. So if you want to say 23, T is 4 pi, find terminal point. If you're really good, you could do it in your head, but you're at zero. Remember it uh, once around, you're at two pi. Once around again, you're at four pi. So it's just the same spot. You just call these are all your t's. So they're telling you t is four pi. You're still coming to the same spot. You're basically the same spot is up here. Gross a little bit. Okay. Your terminal point. One, zero. Okay, you want to try some a little tougher one like 31? Negative seven pi over six. Trick to me is uh, you're at kind of a pi over six equivalent. Where are you at negative seven pi over six? Locate. Well, it's pretty darn close to negative six pi over six. And that would be negative pi, and that means you're going around this way, negative pi over six. That would put you to here. Negative seven pi over six would be one pi over six bigger. I don't know if you remember, you're basically coming this way, you'd be at five pi over six. Because you'd be just short of six pi over six. And if you remember your coordinates, your X leg, in effect, it's a 30 degree equivalent. Your X leg would be negative root three over two and your Y leg would be a half. This is long, at 30 degrees, you're flat. I'm drawing it like it's a 45, trying to make it bigger so you can see the numbers. But your X, your terminal point, negative root three over two. I like to, well, no, I guess I won't. All right, so when you do a reference number, 37, they're calling it a reference number because they consider these inputs to functions. You, you input numbers to functions, you don't put an, uh, angles into functions. But it's the same, exact same concept. So 37A reference number, Uh, 
find reference number, I think again, angle. Well, once again, you'd be at three pi over three. You try to look, they try to, I try to pin them where you'd be on the x-axis using that common denominator. So three pi over three, you'd be at pi. Four pi over three, you'd be one pi over three bigger than doing your head on basically. But if I write it out, T ref, this is T ref, space back to the x-axis, space or angle back to the x-axis. Written out four pi over three, subtract three pi over three, one pi over three. Remember, this is acute. This is less than 90 degrees. This is your 60 degree equivalent. Not a whole lot to do if you want to a uh, nastier one or you know, something with odd numbers, try, you know, 39A, 5 pi over 7. Didn't write the reference number. Uh, I didn't write the page number. Yeah, you know, page 510. Uh, 39A equals, equals, sorry, 5 pi over 7, find the ref, the reference. Well, once again, I always look at the whole number of seven pi over seven. And it would be pi there, five pi over seven be less. You can almost do it in your head. That's gotta be two pi over seven. The difference of the two, five pi over seven around. T ref, seven pi over seven subtract five pi makes two pi over seven. All right. If you wanted to tough from like 39C, T is negative three, find T ref. Well, again, negative, you're going this way. And if you're back here at negative pi, well, that's negative 3.14 if you know your decimal for pi. Negative three, when you'd come to it before. That's not negative three, my fault. Negative three is around to here. You can almost do this in your head. You see it's 0.14. This is T ref. I ignore the negatives. I'm basically just doing the larger one, 3.14, and you're subtracting three, it's 0.14. Remember, your reference angle is always positive. This is T ref, the difference in the middle, always positive. So you can drop all the negatives, just confuses things. They just indicate you're going in this direction. Uh, okay, um, now the last little section, 41, they want both. 41 to 54, again, page 510. You want to find both. Reference, uh, reference number. and terminal point. Uh, we can look at 41. Okay, they're giving you T is 11 pi over six. Okay, find T ref, terminal, Well, if I play the same game over here at pi using that common denominator, you're at six over six pi. You're pretty kind of far from 11 pi over six. Notice how it's close to 12 pi over six. 
this would be 12 pi. You're at 2 pi. And you're starting at 0, you're at 6 pi over 6, you round to 12 pi over 6. So you're going to come to 11 pi over 6 before you hit 12 pi over 6. You can see it in your head, your reference. There's got to be the difference, pi over 6. 12 pi over 6 minus 11 pi over 6, making 1 pi over 6. Difference of 1 pi over 6 between them. All right, well, once again, that's a 30 degree equivalent. Your x leg will be long, root 3 over 2. Your y leg will be short and a half. Your terminal point, root 3 over 2. Now, on the triangle, we call that positive a half. It was just a pure triangle. But in this coordinate system, it's actually negative a half. That's sort of the difference between triangles and just a straight triangle. We always take all the legs and the hypotenuse positive because you're not referencing it to any kind of coordinate system where you get zero, zero here. So when you when you're calling that zero, zero, your origin point, then positives are forward and up and negatives are left and down. And if, well, that's negative. Since it's down, reference to this, it's actually negative. Ah, uh, you want to try the your one like uh, negative, uh, like 41 over 6, page 5, 10, 49, 41 pi over 6, and uh, find P ref in your terminal point. Well, once again, using this common denominator, you're at 6 pi over 6. Here, you're at 12 pi over 6. You're a long way from 41 pi over 6. You just got to keep going. Uh, it's 2 pi. So you can, keep, you can keep writing this one down. You don't really have to, because I think, I think you're going to go around again at 4 pi. You're going to be at 24 pi over 6. 4 pi, you'll be at 24 pi over, so you're still a long way from 41 pi over 6. Okay. So keep going again, 6 pi, another 2 pi around, you're at 6 pi. You're adding 12 pi over 6 every time, that would put you at 36 pi over 6. I'm getting closer and closer. See, I'm only 5 pi over 6 short. That's still not your reference. So in other words, your 6 pi over 6, a 36 pi over 6, I don't have to do the next one. Uh, let's see, what would be, if it's like a 36, just try to puzzle it out, 36 pi over 6. All right, plus 5 pi over 6, you'd be at 41 pi over 6. So, be around 41 pi over 6, pi over 6. See, this would be 5, in effect, 5 pi over 6, but your reference would just be straight pi over 6. That's 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, yeah. P ref would be uh, pi over 6. Reference the stuff back to the small numbers. Uh, yeah, you'd, you'd be at, uh, I don't even want to figure that out. It, it's hard to, it, it's hard to, I understand it's hard to teach jiggering in your head, but um, I don't know of any other weird way to do it. There's no formula to memorize for it. All right, so then the terminal point up here, once again, your terminal point, pi over six equivalent, your x would be negative root three over two, the long side. Your, why would be positive a half? All right, that's pretty much everything. You asked for five, three to fifty-three. We go on to six two. Show you some examples of that. It's the same formulas. They just use a T instead of an angle. Again, we told you last 
section, our last chapter, Y is your sine, the sine of an angle is your Y coordinate, cosine of an angle is your X coordinate, tangent is Y over X, and then the other three simply uh, invert them. It's really a repeat. They just use letter T instead of angle theta. Uh, let's see. Show you here. Okay, signs of the trig function. We went over this. Positive. They're all positive. Signs your uh, cosine your x coordinate. Signs your y coordinate. Tangent y over x would all be positive here. The sine's positive here. Cosine x coordinates turn negative. Therefore, when you divide them, you get tangent. Your tangent's negative here, so only the sine is positive. The tangent's positive here because both x and y are negative, making your tangent positive. And then here, your cosine is positive because it's x is positive, but your sine and your tangent are negative because y is negative and the ratio should be negative. It's really a repeat, amazing how you can make money writing a book, plagiarizing yourself. Uh, here's where they show to you the uh, reciprocals. The one uh, little different thing, new thing. Oh yeah, same identities. I don't see why I gotta write all this stuff. I shouldn't have to write all this stuff down. I made that special video and gave you five points extra credit if you watched it. But uh, chapter five, this is called theta. Now it's called letter T. Okay, even and odd, that's new. New 516, even versus odd functions. Okay, yeah, just to remind you, college algebra. I'll give you a simple one like x squared. If you're up, have an x and you have an f of x. Here you have minus x, f of minus x. If the f of x equal, that's an f, sorry, equals your f of minus x, f is even. In practical terms, it means you can't ignore. I'll show you with numbers and then we'll, I'll show you, I'll argue out the tricks with numbers. If this is like two, f of x is four. Use a negative two up here, f of negative two is negative two squared, also four. They're equal. Write it down here, f of two equals four, f of negative two equals neg uh, four. These are equal, f is even. All right. If you um, do odd, that's like x cubed. Odd x cubed. Basically, one side is down, up, and one side is down. X, f of x, negative x, f of negative x. If they're negatives, f of x equals negative f of negative x. F is odd. In effect, this negative comes out. So if I, if I use like x equal two, f of two here is two cubed, eight. If I use negative two, negative two cubed, negative eight, negatives of each other. F is odd. Okay, just to show you, I'll, I'll just show you the first three. So, sine. I'll just uh, punch it with numbers. I'll try like a sine of two. It doesn't matter if you're degree mode or radian mode. But I will 
put myself in radian mode just so I get the accurate numbers out. But you can do this in degree. It does not matter. Input doesn't matter. Does not matter. So if I punch sine of two, 909. All right, you understand if I punch sine of negative two, if I get the same thing, it's even. If I get negative of it, it's odd. Sine negative two, drum roll. It's negative of it. Sine is odd. This means sine of an X is negative sine of a negative X. I usually use it this way. Doesn't matter which side you put the negative this way, a sine of a negative x is negative a sine of x. In effect, the negative here comes out. Cosine of two. Negative 0.416. The sign negative two. Negative point four one six. Same. Cosine is even. Cosine of X equals cosine of negative X. You can ignore that. You can replace anytime you see a cosine of negative x, you can just replace it with cosine of x as if this was ignored. They're exactly, they'll give you exactly the same thing. Tangent. Negative 2.185 tangent negative 2. Two point one eight five. Tangent is odd again. A tangent of a negative x, negative a tangent x. Just like sine comes out. Bottom line: sine tangent odd. Cosine even. It makes sense on the sine of tangent because in effect, tangent goes as a sine because tangent, remember, is sine over cosine. So tangent acts like your sine on top. That's what they're saying here. Uh, their flips are also have the same property. So sine and its inverse cosecant are odd, tangent, cotangent are odd because it just flips. That doesn't change whether you're even or odd if you flip it upside down. Cosine and secant, they're flipped and they are the even ones. All right, Let's see if I can find uh, a couple examples. Um, you know, number three, it's really a repeat. <laughs> 21 in the last section. They want you to uh, find your sine t and cosine t for the values of t. I'll just show you how to write that. It's really the exact same problem as 21 in the last section. Page 518, starting with number three. Once again, it gives you that circle, pi over four increments. Uh, they, in effect, want you to write down at each red dot. Uh, here, the zero power four, I do the first couple. Basically, that a sine of zero is zero because your coordinate, you're at um, zero radians, your coordinate is one, zero here, root two over two, root two over two. So, sine of t, in effect, if this is your t, sine zero, zero. So, sine zero is one, your x coordinate, that's your x coordinate, that's your y coordinate. 
Uh, next one, you can call that coordinate one. Circle one, coordinate one. This was state number two. Sine pi over four, root two over two. That's your y coordinate, but the, the x coordinate, same thing. Root two over two, but that, of course, is your x coordinate. And on down the line. Next one up here at three, zero, one. You're at pi over two, sine pi over two, one. Of course, you can punch these on the calculator too. Uh, cosine pi over two is zero, et cetera, around. Next one would be number four. And again, that's a pi over four, bad drawing. You're, you'd be at three pi over four. Uh, let's see, about to wrap this up. Save the rest of them for uh, find exact value. Page 519. Uh, let's see. Five, section 6 to 5 through 21. Yeah, 5 to 21 and 27 to 35. And finished with 63 to 77. Yeah, where they have you draw triangles out of the unit. So we, we've done, done that before as well. May have to save that for like 5a, sine 7 pi over 6. We want exact value. So it's a matter of locate. 7 pi over 6, write down the y coordinate, it's a sign. Well, once again, this is 6 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6 would be 1 pi over 6 bigger. That's your reference, although they didn't ask for it. And your coordinates, x leg would be negative root 3 over 2. We didn't ask for that. Your y coordinate would be negative a half, sine of seven pi over six would be negative one half. You can punch it on the calculator. On calculator, you would get uh, negative 0.5. If we don't, I'll quit on the spot. Gradient mode, sine seven pi divided by six, All right, we're going to cover 50 minutes. We're going to head and I got to get to my nine o'clock Zoom. So we're going to call it there. I didn't get to examples of the rest of it, but we'll uh, do those. We got another Zoom session Friday to do those. And again, a lot of it is repeat. Hopefully you can puzzle it out. Like 27. Yeah, can't resist. Okay, they, you're given. People can't believe how easy this is. Negative four fifths at a t. I want you to find sine of t plus negative four fifths direct y coordinate cosine of t. That's your negative three fifths. Again, y coordinate. That's your x coordinate directly. Tangent T is a little more work. Y over X, or sine over cosine, sine over cosine, negative four fifths divided by negative three fifths, negative four fifths times negative five thirds, comes up, uh, fives cancel, it comes up positive four thirds. You can almost see it, do it in your head. Be that top over that, the two negatives divide out to be positive, be four over three. All right, didn't get a chance to get to the last one, but uh, we'll uh, have one more Zoom session to do that. We'll uh, end the meeting so I can get to my nine o'clock meeting.